Good morning everybody and welcome to morning prayer for Tuesday the 6th of, no, the 8th of June. <laughs> Can't read a date now. Welcome, uh, it's good to be with you all this morning, hope you're all doing okay and uh, get a chance to enjoy a bit of sunshine again. Um, this morning we're going to carry on with our usual uh, Tuesday thing of doing a Tuesday check-in and just to touch base on mental health and well-being and those sorts of things and it's so important to have those kind of conversations to to say how we're doing even if it's only to ourselves uh, because actually if you hurt your arm Toby for example he's uh, he hurt his wrist yesterday at school so he's had some calpol before school going in and he's going to keep an eye on it and teacher's going to keep an eye on it and that's all well and good and that's sort of normal but when it's our sort of mental health we we don't treat it in the same way where sometimes we try and hide it or cover it or are ashamed of it or sometimes we go and try and get help and then the help's not forthcoming because uh, it's not taken seriously by healthcare professionals even sometimes but actually it's so important and it affects how how we live our lives so we're going to carry on with our our Tuesday check-ins uh, and yeah just see how we're doing so let's just check we've got the comments going morning everybody morning glad morning barbara morning diana morning leslie morning valerie morning roy one or two people said they weren't able to to find the live video yesterday so hopefully if that was you uh then you're able to find us today either on the st peter's page or st mary's page if you leave comments on the st peter's page then um i'll be able to see them if they're left live and incorporate them into the prayers as we go on but even if you don't I have managed to do that live on the St Peter's page. We'll still pray for them and uh, God still hears all of our cares and our concerns. So we're going to start with our Tuesday check-in and then we're going to uh, move into our prayers. Just to let you know when we come to them, the readings for today, we've got Psalm 36, Psalm 36 and Romans chapter 7 verses 7 to the end. <laughs> How are you doing today? How are you feeling today? How are you feeling physically? Emotionally? Mentally? looking after yourself today? Are you drinking enough water? Eating a balanced diet? How are you sleeping at the moment? Do you feel rested when you wake up? your thinking at the moment? How are your thoughts making you feel? Are you having thoughts that are unhelpful? Are there things rattling around in your brain that you know shouldn't really be there? Things that you have no control over and yet they weigh heavy on you. stress levels like at the moment? How full is your stress container, your capacity to handle stresses and strains of everyday life? What things are feeding into those stress levels? What things do you do, can you do to help relieve some of that stress? coping strategies do you have in place? Are they working? It's 
that we bring all of that, our whole selves, body, heart, mind, strength, before God as we come to pray and we say, O oh Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. So Psalm 36. Sin whispers to the wicked in the depths of their heart. There is no fear of God before their eyes. They flatter themselves in their own eyes that their abominable sin will not be found out. The words of their mouths are unrighteous and full of deceit. They have ceased to act wisely and to do good. They think out mischief upon their beds and have set themselves in no good way, nor do they abhor that which is evil. Your love, O Lord, reaches to the heavens, and your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness stands like the strong mountains, your justice like the great deep. You, Lord, shall save both man and beast. How precious is your loving mercy, O God! All mortal flesh shall take refuge under the shadow of your wings. They shall be satisfied with the abundance of your house. They shall drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the well of life, and in your light shall we see light. O continue your loving kindness to those who know you, and your righteousness to those who are true of heart. Let not the foot of pride come against me, nor the hand of the ungodly thrust me away. They are fallen, all who work wickedness. They are cast down and are not able to stand. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. O God, the well of life, make us bright with wisdom that we may be lightened with the knowledge of your glory in the face of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our New Testament reading is from Romans chapter 7 and verses 7 to the end of the chapter. Paul's continuing his uh, talking about the law and sin and being under the law and not under the law and those sorts of things um, that we've been reading about. What then should we say? That the law is sin? By no means. Yet if it had not been for the law, I would not have known sin. I would not have known what it is to covet if the law had not said, you shall not covet. But sin, seizing an opportunity in the commandment, produced in me all kinds of covetousness. Apart from the law, sin lies dead. I was once alive apart from the law, but when the commandment came, sin revived and I died, and the very commandment that promised life proved to be death to me. For sin, seizing an opportunity in the commandment, deceived me, and through it killed me. So the law is holy, and the commandment is holy and just and good. Did what is good then bring death to me? By no means. It was sin working death in me through what is good, in order that sin might be shown to be sin, and through the commandment might become sinful beyond measure. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am of the flesh, sold into slavery under sin. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now if I do what I do not want, 
I agree that the law is good. But in fact, if it, it is no longer that I do it, but that sin dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me, that is, in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now if I do not now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but the sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies confusing enough without turning two pages at once. When I so I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self. But I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with my mind I am a slave to the law of God. But with my flesh, I am a slave to the law of sin. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It's a fairly confusing passage to, to read, to listen to on sort of first listening. Worth, worth reading, uh, go through again, reading again if you get a chance to later today. It's the end of Romans chapter 7. But actually... It's one of those passages that you can't read out of context, because actually to truly understand that passage, you need the following passage. So Paul's been talking about uh, the law and the sin and the condemnation and all of those sorts of things, being a slave uh, to the law of God, but in my flesh I'm a slave to the law of sin. But actually it's the next verse, 8, eight verse 1, which I presume we'll hear tomorrow. Uh, let's just check. Yep, which we'll hear tomorrow, which really is the key to that whole passage. He's been having this whole internal wrestling about uh, wanting to do the right thing, but struggling and finding himself doing the wrong thing. And actually, really, it's 8 verse 1 that's the key. There is now, therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So all of that talk of being a slave, being condemned, all of that means nothing in the face of what Jesus has done. And that's really what Paul's trying to say and what he'd go on to say. Uh, so we've been wrestling through some challenging stuff for the last few days, but um, worth persevering because there's some really good stuff coming up and we need to know that background before we get to it. So there we go. You can look forward to finding out a bit more about that tomorrow morning in morning prayer from Romans chapter 8. So now we're going to come to our prayers and do uh, in the inter in the comments share places, people, situations, for prayer, for thanksgiving. It's really good to, to hear about some of the people that we've been praying for, if they're recovering or doing well or in remission or whatever it might be. Uh, so do keep uh, sharing updates as well um, on those people that we've been praying for. Almighty and everlasting God, we thank you that you have brought us safely to the beginning of this day. Keep us from falling into sin or running into danger. Order us in all our doings and guide us to do always what is righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So Lord, we come before you this morning. We lift those who are in our thoughts, in our prayers to you. Some of them we'll see, some of them we may not be able to see, but we know for each of them, you are with them. We pray particularly this morning for Heidi, for Michael, Barry, for Kathleen, for Lynn, Mary, and Georgia. We pray for Chris, 
Meg and Raphael. For Sue, Andrew, Francis, Luz and Anne. We pray for Ella, Kate and all the family. Alex, David and Maureen. Pray for Adrian. We pray for Clive, Yvonne, Pat, Harry, Timothy, Eileen, and Sue. We pray for Gloria gone for a long-awaited surgery. We pray that that's gone well. We pray for her recovery. We pray for Jeff, a long-standing member of St Mary's who passed away last week. And we pray for Diana, his wife. For the issue of international aid, which is in the news at the moment. We pray that our leaders would do the right thing and continue to contribute international aid, support our neighbours around the world. We pray that the true same would be true of the vaccines as well. We pray for the ongoing distribution. We rejoice in our ability to be vaccinated freely and easily. We know that that's not the case for so many places around the world. We pray that we would do our part to support that effort. So we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. Keep us good, Lord, under the shadow of your mercy in this time of uncertainty and distress. Sustain and support the anxious and fearful, and lift up all who are brought low, that we may rejoice in your comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Eternal God and Father, you create and redeem us by the power of your love. Guide and strengthen us by your Spirit, that we may give ourselves in love and service to one another and to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So may the Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you for joining me for prayers this morning. And... Uh, I do hope that whatever the rest of your day holds, it's a good and a blessed one. So take care, everybody. Bye.